general surgeon, and every general surgeon will tell you this, we have never saved a life on the battlefield. The person that has saved the life on the battlefield is that first responder, that medic that has gone into harm's way. Oftentimes when people are shooting at him or her, grab his buddy, pulled him off of the battlefield, and immediately started doing resuscitation on that. The majority of the potential preventable deaths on the battlefield continue to be bleeding. The bleeding's not from extremities, the bleeding's from places where you can't put a tourniquet on. So the chest, the abdomen, or what's called the junctional area. So where groin, ar armpits and all, you can't really put a tourniquet, but if you have somebody who is traumatically amputated from an IED or from a bomb, it's hard to put a tourniquet on here. So how do you control this bleeding? We're using uh, several technologies, balloons uh, that go in through arteries in the groin or in the armpit that can go into the aorta or go into a branch of the aorta and block that so that no more blood goes down past that area. Blood continues to flow in there, but it doesn't flow out of a big gaping hole that you can't put a tourniquet on. If you go back to images of uh, soldiers and medics in World War II, they were hanging bags of plasma. The challenge with that is plasma at that time was unfiltered, and so the risk of communicating diseases like hepatitis, now AIDS, and others um, brought plasma out of disfavor. Freeze-dried plasma, a huge game changer in, in dealing with, with hemorrhage on the battlefield, it comes as a powder, so it doesn't have an expiration date uh, to speak of. It doesn't have the challenges of cold transport and monitoring all the rest of that stuff. You're able to send it and store it for a lot longer on the battlefield, reconstitute it, give it to somebody, and in there are all the clotting factors to allow your blood to clot again. Readiness can never drop down. Everything that everybody does in their daytime job, in a military treatment facility, dental treatment facility, veterinary treatment facility, has got to be focused on either I'm getting that soldier coming through or that military working dog coming through, ready to go into harm's way, or that I am keeping myself to the highest level of my individual training so that I am ready to go tomorrow. Army Medicine, one team, one purpose. Conserving the fighting strength since 1775.